Hello fellow vintage Ray-Ban lovers out there, hope you're well and welcome to another video. So, as you've seen in the title, today is going to be about five things that I hate about vintage Ray-Ban collecting. So, this has taken me, you wouldn't believe it, but it's taken me quite a long time to actually come up with five things that I hate about collecting vintage Ray-Ban sunglasses. Let me just lay down my feelings about collecting um, uh, these beautiful, historical, interesting, wonderful quality um, sunglasses. You know, right from there, I absolutely love collecting vintage Ray-Ban sunglasses uh, and if you're a keen follower of my channel you know I, I can sometimes get extremely excited about um, picking up uh, the, the, my newest piece for my collection. However, not everything is flowers and butterflies. Um, there are certain elements of this game that absolutely wind me up um, and I want to share them with you right now. So I have actually um, put it into my phone so that I don't actually forget. So um, I've got five and the first one is um, the lack of historical information. So as a collector in my view, if you're serious about collecting anything in this world, then you need to be serious about finding information about particular pieces. So like an antiques dealer, an antiques dealer loves finding, you know, those, um, those really rare pieces. However, they spend a lot of their time researching and trying to find out information about those pieces, historical facts, so on and so forth, so that when they come to auction, or when they come to sell it, or when they've got it in their collection, they have all of the information to hand, to use, and to either sell it on, to um, um, make other people knowledgeable about the piece, so on and so forth. The problem with Bush and Lum, is that they didn't provide that information, you know, um, in a way that potentially these days, because we have the internet, you know, you would get that information quite easily. And what has, what has happened, because there was a lack of specific information about particular areas of the Ray-Ban world, the vintage Ray-Ban world, is open the door up for people to be able to make up anything they want. As long as it sounds reasonable and logical, people then go with that story. So, one, so an example of that is the 4BL phenomenon. So if you know or if you don't know, the 4BL phenomenon, I've done a video on it, go and look in my his historical videos. Um, basically you have the normal BL etch in the normal hinge point positions and then you have an extra BL etch at the 12 o'clock position. Normally this BL etch at the 12 o'clock position will be a different kind of BL design. It will still be in keeping with a, um, a genuine BL etch. But that is one of an example of, you know, the lack of information. There's there's nothing in catalogues, um, you know. Um, it's just very difficult to get hold of specific uh, information, so that actually you've got a proper timeline, you've got a proper uh, historical facts with those timelines. Uh, so that's one thing that really winds me up about collecting vintage Ray-Ban sunglasses. Number two that I hate about collecting vintage Ray-Ban sunglasses are large metal screws. 
So if you don't know what a large metal is, a large metal is essentially an aviator, okay? It's a metal frame and the, um, the lenses within these frames and the temples within this frame are, um, are joined um, with metal screws, okay? Um, now, if you have a look at a frame, an aviator frame, you will see two screws at the hinge points. These screws are absolutely tiny. Now, when you're trying to either maybe clean the frame, you've got to take the lenses out, or if you want to change the lenses, you've got to change the lenses out. I'm telling you now, people, the amount of screws I've lost where I'm unscrewing this thing, or even, actually, tell a lie, tell a lie. It's not even when I'm unscrewing. It's when I'm putting the screw back, and you, you try and, I've got like, um, um, chicken nugget fingers, right? Now, if you're from the UK, right, there's a brand called Bernard Matthews, right? He's basically, it's a massive brand, does turkey and does these, like, what we call chicken drumsticks. I haven't had one for years. I don't even know if they still exist. But if you're from the UK, you know what a Bernard Matthew is. Really? Tender turkey, shaped into boneless drumsticks, coated in crumb. It's great to be on, Mum. Bernard Matthews Golden Drummers. Good to come home to. My fingers are the shape of Bernard Matthews, alright? When you're trying to put these screws back into their little holes, if, if you drop that screw, it is very unlikely you will find that screw again. You literally have to have go-go gadget eyeballs to try and find those screws because they are absolutely tiny. The amount of screws that I've lost into the carpet is, um, is, is unbelievable. It must be close to li literally 50 because I've dropped so many screws. I've had to buy loads of screws to replace the screw that I lost. And what winds me up even more is that you start doing the cleaning of the house and you're hoovering away and then suddenly you hear this clink, 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 clink. And you know full well that's the screw that you lost like maybe months ago. Oh my goodness, seriously, it is. Those screws for the large metal are a pain in the ass. I'm telling you now, it's just unbelievable. Oh, dearie me. Anyway, so that's the second thing I hate about vintage Ray-Ban collecting. The third thing that I hate, number three, are uh, Wayfarer cases. So, a Wayfarer case, they're all standard, the black slip case. There's two things I hate about this case. Number one, it's not very secure. So, like any other case, they, they normally have a clip that you can close, you can, you know, you can upside down, it won't come out. But with Wayfarer cases, because it's a slip case, it has no uh, closure at the top, it's open. So, if you're, you know, if you're a little bit uh, in a hurry or you, you're careless or whatever, those sunglasses will just end up falling out of the case. Now, for all, you could be outside, you could be, the amount of times it's dropped in my car, and because it's glass lenses as well, if you scratch the lens, that's it, it's fucked. And you can't get out the scratch. So it's the worst design on earth. You know, I think they tried to improve it by, um, by creating a closure on a, la on a latter version of the slip cases, but most slip cases for the Wayfarers are the same, they're the open top slip case. And it's just, oh, it's a nightmare. You have to be so, so careful. The second thing I hate about those bloody cases is that when they get old, they end up shedding their inner lining. And essentially, you'll just get a whole load of black dust all over your sunglasses. So it's like, well, <laughs> this, the, the case is there to protect the sunglasses. But this motherfucker ain't protecting the sunglasses, they're making them dirty. So it's like, Jesus Christ, every time you pull out the sunglass, you have to wash this dust, this black 
lying in dust off of the sunglasses. So now what I do, I have to put it into, put the sunglasses into plastic um, sort of sealant bag and then put that bag into the case. It's just unbelievable. I don't know, I don't know who came up with that idea, but it's, you know, it was a good idea to begin with because I'm, you know, the original Wayfarer case is an open slip case and obviously they've, they've looked at that design, decided to keep it, but obviously have, you know, modified it to w what you see now as the black slip case. But it's a, it's a crap design. It really is. And whoever used that inner lining needs shooting. They don't, but it's just a ridiculous inner lining because this bloody thing just disintegrates, you know, uh, after a few years and you get all this black dust all over your sunglasses. I mean, Jesus, wet. Anyway, so that's number three. Number four of five things I hate about collecting vintage Ray-Ban sunglasses are people who love dating their sunglasses but have no idea whatsoever on what they're talking about. I'm going to keep this one brief. In no walk of your life will you make a statement without knowing the facts beforehand. Unless you're a complete knob. Because I cannot understand, how can you date something without knowing the facts? It's, 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 it's practically impossible. Doesn't your pride about having a little bit of knowledge, doesn't that take over from you writing shit? Surely it must do. Unless you have no pride, unless you don't care that you are sounding like a complete dickhead. Yeah? Now, a lot of people don't give a shit, but someone who is well invested in the vintage Ray-Ban world, you sound like a complete and utter knob. You understand? Because you're telling people something which ain't true. You understand? So go out, get your facts before you start talking bollocks. Because you're making yourself look like a look like an idiot. Dating sunglasses, you know, um, saying that they're made in some fucking factory that 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 didn't even fucking exist in the time. I mean, come on now. You know what I mean? These sorts of people piss me off because, and then they don't want to hear it when you when you explain to them that actually, logically, that doesn't make sense, and you try to give them a little bit of knowledgeable information, they don't want to hear it. And it's like, well, okay, where are you getting your information from? Because I know where I'm getting my fucking information from. Where are you getting your information from? You're getting it from the bottom of a fucking skip. Because it's fucking shit. You know what I mean? So, there you have it. So, that's number four. Actually, yeah, that is number four. Is that number four or is that number five? Yes, it's number four. Uh, okay, and last but not least, number five about the five things I hate about collecting vintage Ray-Ban sunglasses. <laughs> and I'm sure this happens to a lot of people. So you go on to, let's say you go on to eBay, you find a, a really nice pair of sunglasses that, that you want in your collection or whatever. You look at the pictures, yeah, like look great. You look at the description and the seller has put uh, vintage Ray-Ban sunglasses uh, in great condition. Okay, so you look at the pictures, blah, blah, blah. You know, you may or you may not um, message the seller. Um, it, it, this one I'm gonna about to say is more annoying when you do message the seller to get specifics. Um, and the seller says, yes, the, the lenses, the frame in great condition, uh, no issues whatsoever. You purchase it, you know, you, you part with your hard-earned cash, right? You wait a few days to collect it in the post, right? Or to receive it in the post. You get it, you crack it open, and you look at the sunglasses, and they're fucked. These ain't in good condition! What was this person looking at 
when I specifically ask them what condition are the lenses or the framing? Are they in good condition? Are there any scratches? This bitch has ended up saying no, no scratches, nothing. It's, it's in great condition. And you get it, and this thing has been through the wars. It looks as if it's been through World War II. What are you looking, are you blind? Can you not see the massive scratch in the middle of the bloody lenses? Can you not see that it, it is actually in the field of my vision? Can you not see that the frame is fucked? What are you looking at? How can you clear, how can you say that these sunglasses are in great condition when they are not? And it happens time and time and time again. It's an absolute wind up. So then you then have to spend your own cash again to send this fucker back. Because they don't want to pay for the postage. You understand? It's a, it's a fucking joke. So that, oh, that just winds the hell out of me. It really, really does. If I'm asking you a specific question, just tell me the truth, please. Don't be wasting my time because you're wasting my time, you're wasting your time. Because if you tell me these sunglasses are in great condition, I'm expecting them to be in great condition, not in fucked up condition. So that's, that's the one that, that, that well and truly just pisses me off is number five, the con when someone says the condition of the sunglasses are great and they are not. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Those are my five things that I hate about collecting vintage Ray-Ban sunglasses. But I hope you enjoyed this video, ladies and gentlemen. Please like, please share, please comment, but most of all, please subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Peace.